I'm Robbie. And I'm Matt. Welcome to our podcast. Life can often feel like we're struggling to get our heads above water. But during these times, Jesus gives us hope and a new perspective. Come alongside us as we approach life with a spiritual lens. This is In the Water. Hello, everyone, and welcome. This is the beginning of our podcast. This is how we start things now. <laughs> yeah. Um, before we get into our topic today, which is, what are we calling it? Just a broad general view of mental health, um, an introduction to it. Mm-hmm. Um, before we dive in to the water, <laughs> let's... <laughs> man, we make that joke every time. Don't we? <laughs> it's too obvious. <laughs> yeah, but uh, let me open up with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we lift up a praise to you and thank you because it's you for you and for your glory that we do this podcast, um, that we talk and just dive into um, deep spiritual concepts. We do it because you have allowed us to and because you give us the spirit of glorifying you. Um, Lord, in my life last night, there was a power outage and the entire evening was spent in the dark. Um, but with you, Lord God, I know that we are always in the light of your son, Jesus, um, and we don't need the things of this world. We don't need electricity. We don't need creature comforts um, when all we have is you. So thank you, Lord God. Um, I pray a blessing over the conversation that Matt and I have um, that will be edifying to you and that those who, who join us and just listen and and join us on this journey will um, become sanctified in your in your grace as well. So we pray all these things for your son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. I feel like it's important in this first official episode to kind of recap like mental health 101 discussion that we're going to have today which is kind of like uh, a primer or like a brief on on what we're going to be talking about like what is the point of this this podcast um and why it started like why did this become such a personal thing for us uh that we decided to to start this podcast in the first place yep um mental health is a subject that's very close to my heart um, I'm going to talk about it later in the episode, but um, for f- full disclosure, um, I am someone who has been diagnosed with a mental illness, and it's something that I was diagnosed with a couple years ago when I was t- 20 years old, um, and once I be- was diagnosed, um, I became a big advocate for mental health in the church, mental health in the lives of my friends around me, mental health just in culture and society. Yeah. Yeah, I am also no stranger to, to struggles with, with mental health. Um, I can remember uh, as far back as, as young childhood uh, instances of um, what looking back I can can see and can identify as as depression um, or, uh, or feeling anxious um, and then really feeling that come on much more strongly in my junior high years. So being able to to now uh digitally share my testimony and and say that the church has been such a huge blessing in in my mental health journey uh and also be able to say that there are people out there who understand exactly what you're going through uh it was something that would have been very impactful for me if i had heard something like this Mm. um with what we're trying to accomplish here so Matt just talked a little bit about how the church impacted him positively with his mental health, but that's frequently not the case. So it was the interactions with people and it was the activities that you got to do at church that really um, came through for you. Yeah, yeah. Um, but one of the, the main issues with the church in general is that it's often dismissive of mental health mm-hmm. issues in general. Yeah, it's uh, I received very little help when it actually came to practical things about my mental health or even non-practical things like just being able to express myself. Um, I did not feel like I could do that. And it, um, it wasn't until uh, just maybe a couple of years ago that I actually told anyone at the church that I was struggling with depression. Um, I was going through a very particularly rough season. And I just uh, 
wanted to open up to someone about it. And basically the advice that I got was just to push through. Uh, <laughs> Use your willpower to get through right. mental health problems. <laughs> and it's like, okay, well, the problem with that is that all of my mental energy is going towards like trying to not give in to my depression. So I don't really have much willpower left to just end it. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, it's very hard for people who don't struggle with their mental health or haven't been able to identify those things in their life to understand exactly what it is that people are going through. Like I, I felt in particular, like people just did not understand what it was like to be me. Um, and kind of the things that I would struggle with and it, felt very lonely to be kind of surrounded by people that should be able to help that either just wouldn't or couldn't. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and so I'm very grateful to, uh, to the church in general for existing and for having a place where I could be away from negative environments and things that would drag down my mental health uh, in very rough seasons. Um, but the church is, is not without its fault uh, when it comes to addressing mental health. I think oftentimes the the key phrase is just give it to God. Yeah, let's just pray <laughs> yeah, about and, it. And it's like, oh, yeah, cool. That's going to make me feel a lot better, which actually uh, I mean, we'll get into a bit. Like prayer will help you feel better. Um, but telling someone just to pray and... Um, not helping them know what to pray over or how. Yeah, or like why prayer is important, why it's uh, not just a band-aid, but a solution mm -hmm. almost. Um, like not being able to walk alongside people in their mental health is one of the major faults of the church, mm. I feel. Yeah, there's a stigma that's associated with mental health. Um, there's, if not now, there certainly was in the past, in the recent past, a stigma um, about going to therapy about seeking help. Let, let, let's think about the, the, the ways that um, the church doesn't really help in, in its addressing of mental health. Yeah, I've, I've heard, um, oh, just life is full of, of hills and valleys. Um, so this is like, a valley. That yeah, this is a valley. Through. Like, I'm like, okay, cool. Where, where are the hills? Like, <laughs> <laughs> please show me some hills. That'd be great. Um, uh, another huge one that I've heard is, oh, this, this is just a season. Um, it's like, okay, yeah. Uh, so we have pushed through it, which is like, uh, like do everything you can to, uh, to, to fight this so that you can get through it as quickly as possible. Um, and, uh, and get back to being an, a quote unquote normal person. Um, and then this is just a season, which is basically just saying, just wait for it to be over. Um, just like, oh, you'll be fine eventually. Mm -hmm. you'll forget about this mm -hmm. um and one day you'll wake up and be fine um both very dismissive things that i've heard so let me get into uh, a particular aspect of mental health that um, resonates with me um i dislike the term mental illness so much that i don't even refer to mental illness as mental illness most of the time because a mental illness is not truly a disease it's not like cancer and it's not like um, diseases of, of um, DNA because we don't contract them. They're simply conditions um, that come about and show themselves as we get older. In a sense, these mental, mental illnesses have been around since we were born. My preferred term to describe them are mental conditions because then it shows that just because you have something called it, something that society labels as anxiety or just because you have something that society labels as depression doesn't mean that you're broken. It doesn't mean that you're, you need to be fixed and you need, you need a bunch of pills and you need therapy and you need psychiatry in order to get well again, if there even is a, such a thing as getting well. Mm -hmm. um, what it means is that there's a new um, homeostasis. There's a new just mental equilibrium spot where um, you are going to um, navigate the rest of your life with. Um, so by calling mental illnesses, mental conditions, I hope to be able to, in my own way, combat the stigma 
that follows people who have mental illnesses. Because like I s said a little earlier, everybody I know um, demonstrates mental illness symptoms. So in that way, does that mean everyone is sick? <laughs> <laughs> is everybody mentally ill? Is ever is there nobody who's healthy, quote unquote? Yeah, I I, I really like that term that that Robbie uses the uh, mental condition over mental illness. Uh, a, a condition is something that that's saying like this is the state that you are in. Um, an illness is something like this is something that is afflicting you. It definitely has a negative slant to it, and it's not like we just woke up one morning and we caught a cold. Like, we don't have the flu. It's not just going to write itself out in three days. Mm -hmm. Like, this is the state that our minds are in. Mm -hmm. um, this is how things are. Like you said, it's a new equilibrium. It's like, okay, well, if this is the state that we are in, um, obviously, it, it's not a fun thing. to. It's not a fun place to be. Um, but if this is, is the state that we are in, then we need to figure out ways that we can... Uh, healthy ways that we can get to a place where we uh, can thrive, where we are happy and healthy. The way that this is the state that my brain is in. Mm. This is the state that I am in. Um, and it's not something that I just change. Like, I'm not choosing to be like this. Uh, I want to be happy. I want to be healthy. And I want everything to feel like it's going to be okay because sometimes it just doesn't. It takes practice to find things that uh, that take us from an equilibrium of uh, of whatever state we are in to an equilibrium of okay, like I'm living a uh, a life that makes me happy and I feel healthy and I'm surrounded by people who love me uh, and that I know care for me. Um, sometimes it's difficult to find those positive environments that we can thrive in. Because uh, it's not that we are constructed poorly. It's just that we're constructed differently um, than some people. It's mm -hmm. not a worse exactly. equilibrium. It's just different. Um, and we, we see it, uh, people in scripture who are constantly questioning God. Like, why am I like this? Why did you make me this way? <laughs> yeah, um, I am wretched and afflicted. God, mm -hmm. why am I this way? I, I think of two prime examples when it comes to that and looking at the story of Job, uh, who was really being put through the ringer uh, and being tested because he is seen as this faithful man of God. And so, uh, so we see this dialogue between uh, God and Satan, where Satan is saying, okay, we'll, we'll take away all the blessings that you've given him and see how faithful he is then see how much he loves you then and so god says okay and and he takes everything from job and more uh all of the blessings and job still stands firm in his faith in god um and is willing to stand up to uh his wife and all of his friends who are saying just just curse god and, and die um and he refuses to do so like if that is not mental fortitude, then I do not know what is. Um, like that yeah. is, um, that is someone in scripture who obviously he, he mourned everything that was taken from him, but he never lost hope in God. Um, and then looking uh, on the opposite end of the spectrum at King David, who wrote the book of Psalms. Uh, and in just about every Psalm, we see this very emotional roller coaster of things where where David says, God, like, why are you doing this to me? Why am I like this, God? Um, why are, have you uh, given my enemies power? Why um, do I feel so hopeless? Where are you, God? Why have you left me? I feel uh, desolate and abandoned and betrayed. But you're still good. And I know that this has to be happening for a reason. And David has these very dramatic periods where he's... Uh, almost like he, he's wrestling with this. And it's this very clear and prime example, pretty much the entire book of Psalms, where uh, we see someone who is, is wrestling with the reality of their life um, and still ends up turning to God and saying, God, I, I know that, that I'm here for a reason. I know that um, that you have me going through this season for a purpose. There's a reason 
that I have been constructed this way. Um, but that does not mean that God loves Job more than David. Um, it does not mean that um, David is a worse follower of God than Job is. Uh, it just makes them two different people um, and two different circumstances. And they served two very different purposes in the grand scheme of, of God's plan. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That was great. Um, let's look at some other uh, scripture passages that I have here. Um, let's think for a second about the condition of blindness. Um, I don't think people call blindness a disease unless a, di unless a disease caused the blindness. But let's say blindness right from birth. That's more of a condition. It's more of a, a disability. Um, in the book of John, chapter 9, verse 2, um, there are disciples who are asking Jesus a question. They say, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born with the condition of blindness? And Jesus answered to him, to them, neither this man nor his parents have sinned, but this happened so that the works of God should be revealed in him. So it shows that Jesus is saying no one is at fault when they're blind. No one is at fault when they have certain conditions from birth. And I don't think Jesus or God wants us to believe that we are at fault when we have mental health problems. It's not something that we should blame on ourselves when we have depression or anxiety. It's not something that we should blame on our parents, even though our parents can be really big uh, I guess, catalysts for mental health problems um, appearing. Mental health conditions and problems are simply opportunities for God to reveal himself um, in the same way that, that Matt just explains in Job's life and in David's life. Um, God revealed himself in a very mighty way. Um, it takes a while for God to show himself. To make no mm -hmm. mistake, sometimes, oftentimes God does not appear to you in the middle of your worst mental health problem, in the middle of your, your, your agonizing struggles. Um, oftentimes God does not show himself that, in there, but he is there. That very low point where I had been struggling with so many things and feeling like I was losing that battle uh, of my mental health, that I was finally silent. And that's often when I've heard God speak the loudest is when I finally just shut up and uh, and I was silent enough to listen hmm. um, and it was like God was saying good like I'm glad that you got that out of your system mm -hmm. now we can talk hmm. um, and just like this uh, like we see in that passage just like this quiet calm whisper like uh like how a child looks at their father um as they're driving like just they have it all under control and everything is fine and everything is safe mm. um that's what that whisper sort of feels like and has felt like in my life mm. the the last passage that i wanted to bring up was in second corinthians chapter 12 um this is Paul speaking. He says, Therefore, in order to keep me from becoming con conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Um, so as far as I know, there's no consensus about what Paul is talking about. Usually they say, oh, it's like a physiological um, condition that, that Paul is talking about, or it's a special kind of temptation that Paul has given, um, a messenger of Satan. But if you were to ask me, what is a thorn in the flesh? I would respond by saying it, it might be something mental, a mental condition that Paul was um, had aggravated. Um, because it makes perfect sense. If I personally were in Paul's shoes, then I would describe my own mental conditions as a thorn in my flesh, um, something that mess a messenger of Satan to torment me. Um, continuing in that chapter, verse 8, it says, Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me, the thorn in my flesh. But the Lord said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. What I learned from that passage is that um, Paul's thorn must have been permissible for God. It must have been good from God's perspective to put Paul through this difficulty, through this struggle, this health problem, um, in the same way that it was probably good for 
for Job to go through the struggles that he did, for David to go through all the struggles in his life, for Elijah to go through all of the struggles in his life, it must have been good and God found it proper to do so. So I would say that for all of us who are dealing with any struggle or for, for us who are doing, going through trials and mental health problems and who are really in the depths and the pits of anxiety or depression, God wants to show up in our lives. He wants to and he's eager to and he's rushing towards the moment where he can he can appear in whispers to us um god doesn't want he doesn't enjoy standing by and watching his servant paul get tormented by satan so many times and it shows that I, i'm sure every time that paul prayed to god for 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 being rescued um, god was very close and very eager to to heal paul of what what it was that was afflicting him but um in, in God's infinite wisdom, there are times when he doesn't want us to he want us to be healed of things. So um, this is this passage is the most, I think, influential, pivotal passage for me in my mental health journey in my um, years of um, since being diagnosed, because it shows that even though I've prayed for my own mental condition to be healed and countless of people have prayed over me. Um, to be healed. God hasn't removed um, the diagnosis from me. It's still something that I go to therapy for and it's still something that I um, take medication for. But um, I, it's, it cannot be denied that God has shown up and he's taught me very amazing and very particular things to me that he couldn't teach to Matt or he couldn't teach to anyone else in the world. Yeah, and so there, there is no suffering that is, is not ultimately for our good mm. um, when it comes to to being a Christian. Um, when uh, when you've been, been prayed over and, and prayed that God would remove this from you, the fact that it hasn't been removed means that there's probably some purpose as to what's going on. If it's something that we're going through, then God is ultimately going to use that for good. Um, he does not take delight. God does not take delight in our suffering. Uh, it's not meaningless. It's not pointless. It has some point. Uh, we just can't see it because we're the ones living it. And God has a much better perspective than we do. He's seeing it from a mile high perspective of the things that are going to happen in our life when we can only look back and see the things that have happened. Uh, we have a very limited perspective. I want to share this passage, uh, 2 Corinthians 5.17. It uh, says that, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, which means anyone that, that believes in God, um, anyone who, who calls themselves a Christian um, and, and lives life in that way, this person is a new creation. Um, some translations say, or a new creature. Uh, the old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. Uh, there's this inexplainable transformation that happens when you know God. Um, I know that the, the times where I struggled with my mental health before I was very active in church and before I really had a personal relationship with Christ uh, were very different than the times that I struggled with my mental health when I did have God. Because in one season, I had no hope. And in one season, I had the ultimate hope. Mm -hmm. um, and um, being able to look at ourselves as a new creation when, when we come to know God, it's like that means that this now is the state that we are in. Um, and if, if your struggles with mental health or a mental condition are something that you're being afflicted with or something of this world, I firmly believe that, that when you come to know Jesus, those old things will pass away um, and you will come into a new self. Now, of course, if that is meant to, to become a part of your testimony, and it's not just something that's arbitrary, that maybe uh, is, is a... Uh, a product of our upbringing or our situation, or maybe it's uh, something that we formed in our own lives where we don't have healthy coping habits and we've uh, almost done these things to ourselves, which is a really hard thing to admit. But I can look back in my own life and say, oh, wow, yeah, I uh, did not help myself in this season uh, of depression uh, and anxiety. Um, if those things serve a purpose, then um, they will become a part of, of your testimony. And it's, uh, in some ways, it's hard to look at it this way, but in some ways in my life, it has been a joy 
to struggle with depression and anxiety mm-hmm. yeah. because I have been able to do far more ministry because of those struggles. Mm-hmm. And I've been able to have such a relatable impact and point people to God because of those things that I would not have been able to do if I did not struggle with them. Mm-hmm. And so um, I want to share just one more passage that I feel like is almost a continuation of this idea of becoming a new person. Uh, this is first uh, Peter five, um, six onward um, for some time um, talks about what to do with your anxiety, um, what to do with these things that you're, you're struggling with. Um, it says to humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God so that he may exalt you at the proper time. Uh, having cast all your anxiety on him because he cares about you. Be be of sober spirit. Be on the alert. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. So resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same experiences of suffering are being accomplished by your brothers and sisters who are in the world. Um, that's all the way through verse 9 of that. Um, and there's a couple of key things that I feel are so important in this passage. Uh, Number one being that he will exalt you at the proper time. Um, That of course God wants to remove these things from your life. There's no point in pointless suffering. Mm -hmm. Um, But if it has a point then he's going to remove that at the proper time at the point where you do not need to suffer anymore. Um, At the point where you've learned what you need to learn and grown in the ways that you need to grow so that you can glorify God Um, and those things become a part of your testimony to share with others. Those things can be removed from your life. God can remove those things from your life when you cast them, those things to him, when you trust him. And he says that you have to be careful because these are not things that he is giving you. Um, he's not tormenting you for no reason. Um, these are things of the world. These are ways that Satan is trying to creep into your life and, and tear you away from God. So stand firm in your faith because there are other people who are suffering through the exact same things and they need to hear your testimony. They need to hear how you've overcome those things and they need to hear, especially uh, from people like, uh, not not to to humble brag, but like Robbie and I who experience these things in our day-to-day life and we can point to scriptures and say that God will take them away when they're meant to be taken away, but we can also point and point at our own lives and say, these are things that we live with day to day. Like this is the state that we are in um, and the things that we struggle with. You're not alone. Um, You do not have to feel like you're going through this alone. Um, You have people in your community of Christ that understand what you're going through and can relate to you and want to point you to Christ so that, so you can have this, this peace and calm and this uh, tranquility that comes with just being able to to be silent in your mind and hear the voice of God say that everything is going to be okay and that um, everything has its proper time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we hope that this podcast um, is dispelling the stigma that is uh, surrounding mental illness and is creating a new doctrine, creating a new theology around mental health. Um, but during this last part of um, this episode, we hope that we, Matt and I can empower you, listener, with the power and the grace and the mercy of Jesus Christ. Um, let me read from Psalm chapter 139, verse 14. It says, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Fearfully and wonderfully. Um, and then let's look at Genesis chapter 1, way back in the beginning, verse 31. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed, it was very good. That was describing God's outlook on um, what he had just made on day six of the creation. And what he had just made was man. So mankind is indeed very good. It's the only thing in the creation story that was described as being very good. Um, So what that is to say is whoever you are, whether you have a mental illness, whether you're struggling with it right now, whether you are deep in a valley, you're suicidal, who knows what's going on, you are made very good. You are fearfully and wonderfully made, and you are a very cherished and very precious creation that God has has made. He wants to have a relationship with you. Um, God looks at you and finds you very pleasing to him. Aside from our sin, um, we are fine. And 
what, what, what do I mean by that? Aside from our sin, aside from the original sin that's been passed down to us from Adam and Eve, we have been designed the way that we are. And um, that may sound a little callous, depending on how your life is going, but I personally believe that um, our mental conditions and our struggles are all programmed into us from God so that His glory may be revealed. I really like the, the thing that Matt has said earlier about um, things being brought into our testimony. I think that's a big way that God reconciles and the plot points in our lives to the overall um, narrative, the overall um, plot of our of our life stories. I think he reconciles the bad struggles with the testimony that we have to say about those bad struggles. Um, I don't think that anxiety, anxiety itself is a good thing. I am as frustrated and as angry that anxiety exists as the next person. But I do think that having anxiety is fine, that ha having anxiety and having a support system, people to talk to, um, ch churches to lean on, scripture to empower us, and the God of the universe to comfort us, I think that is all very much in God's writing repertoire. That's how God writes stories. Um, every um, Christ-fearing believer I've met who, who has triumphed over mental conditions and mental health problems have done so and they're praising God just in the same way that Matt had said earlier. They're pra we're praising God and we're um, seeking Him and we're um, proclaiming the, the good work that He did in our testimony and in our lives. Um, I believe that God gave us weaknesses like it said in the thorn in the flesh um, passage. He gave us weaknesses and complementary strengths. What I mean by that is I don't have exactly what what Matt deals with. I don't deal with depression that often in my life. But um, the weakness that afflicted him during certain times of his life is a strength that he uses to empower and embolden other people. So Matt is able to, to rouse up a whole crowd and a whole group of people that I would not be able to because I don't have that testimony in my life. I don't have that strength and that gift of a testimony that, that, that God gave Matt. Um, I think that God wants us to worship him in unique ways. Um, so Matt worships God in his, his own way, through his own stories and struggles and testimonies. I worship God in my own way. Um, I think that those weaknesses that Paul talks about, let me read um, the remainder of that passage. Um, God says to me, Paul, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. And therefore, I, Paul, will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. That's such a, an amazing thought that Paul is boasting and he's glad about his weaknesses. The things that we in the modern American society don't want to have, those kinds of weaknesses, Paul boasts about them because he is so sure that his weaknesses point to God's strength and God's power. But anyways, weaknesses are good in God's kingdom. Just look at how Jesus was brought into the world. He was born as a baby mm -hmm. and as a human, and he had to live underneath his parents' rule. Um, he was vulnerable and he was weak. But in, his, in that vulnerability and in that weakness, God, was, God and Jesus were the strongest. There's something about leaning on other people leaning on um, God, leaning on our parents, leaning on um, the laws of the universe, and on leaning on God's grace that demonstrates the power in God's kingdom. Um, I personally have to lean on my parents, my friends, my siblings, my, um, my health team, so my psychiatrist, my therapist. I lean on people at church. I lean on Matt, and I lean on God most of all. But um, I lean on all of those peop people because I'm weak in a lot of different ways. I'm a frail, fragile um, human being. And I think all human beings are frail and fragile like that and have weaknesses that God doesn't want us to shy away from, but he wants us to, to grow through and um, become strong in the face of those weaknesses because of who we surround ourselves with and who our support system is. I think that um, with enough perseverance, with enough persistence and with enough of God's mercy and grace seeing us through the bad times, I think those bad times are opportunities for us to learn more about who God is, more about us, more about the ways we need support. Amen. I mean, just, just look at what, what Paul said there. I mean, he's basically saying, look at how weak I am. Look how much room God has to work. <laughs> like, I am so proud that I am so weak because 
look how much influence God can have in my life um, because I don't have it all together. Um, God has that much more room to work and help me grow. Amen. So we're praying for you guys, all of you listeners. We pray for you, um, and we know that some of you may be going through really bad struggles that don't feel like opportunities at all. They feel like just the worst moments in your life, and you may feel like ending it all at once. Um, We want to remind you that Paul prayed for three times. Um, I, I have a feeling that Paul prayed even more than three times, but he says that he prayed three times that his thorn in the flesh would be removed from him. So... Um, That shows that he had agony. There were times where he didn't boast. We just wanted you to know that we also pray that um, whatever struggle you're going through, that you will find mercy, that God will rescue you sooner rather than later, um, and that um, any um, illness or any difficulty would be removed from you. Matt and I truly believe that um, a testimony is being written and that God wants to use you in a mighty way, Um, whether you're a Christ follower or whether um, you um, don't believe in Jesus at all. Um, God has something in store that is glorious and beautiful and worthy to boast about. Yeah, and that, that's where this, what we're saying right now, differs from uh, from some of the stereotypical language that we talked about uh, early in the podcast. Um, we're, we're not saying uh, push through it so that you can get back to being quote-unquote normal. We're not saying uh, this is just a season and eventually... Uh, you're just going to be fine. Uh, We're saying that, no, like this uh, season, this is intentional um, and that there is an end point um, to what you are going through. Um, It's not something that is arbitrary, but is something that is uh, going to set you up and and God will use to, like Robbie said, uh, to give you a powerful testimony that you will have a huge impact for Christ. It's not about just pushing through or waiting it out and getting back to to being normal but no god is going to use your struggles and use the things that are afflicting you to ultimately give you a powerful testimony Uh, and that's where that differs we're not saying that that everything is just going to go back to normal we're saying that things are going to be so much better Mm -hmm. than they could ever have been imagined Mm -hmm. to be amen (laughs) (laughs) so yeah we love all of you guys we're praying for you yeah, if, if if there's anything specific that you're going through, uh, just feel free to, to drop it in the comments and, and we'll take a look at those and, and be praying for you and, and uh, seeing how we might address those things through this podcast. This is, uh, this is a, a living podcast. Um, mm-hmm. We uh, have a, a list of topics that are, are near and dear to us, but if there's something that, that we see is important um, for our generation or our society to, to discuss, then... And that's what we want to do. Uh, we're we're here to to combat uh, myths and stereotypes about mental health, um, and and to be here and and, and tell you that you're not alone. Um, but in the meantime, uh, we would just love to pray for you in this moment as we close. So, dear Heavenly Father, we we thank you for um, for this one specific person who is listening, God. We thank you for creating them so intricately, uh, for weaving the fabric of their being together uh, long before uh, we could have even imagined (laughs) who they might be, God. Uh, And sitting here at at this table, uh, Robbie and I don't know who that that person is, this person listening to us right now. Um, But God, you you knew them before they were born. You know them better than their parents know them, better than they know themselves. God, and you can see the trajectory of their life and exactly how this season is going to glorify you, exactly how this season is going to fit into their testimony and exactly who the people are who need to hear that testimony, God. Please let them know that that they're not alone, uh, that there are people in their life that that want to come alongside and support them, God, and that you are always there, that you are are the whisper in in life's chaos, uh, leading us and guiding us and telling us that that there is hope, uh, not just for things to feel normal again, but God, that things would uh, be so much better than we could ever imagine. 
and that you are looking to empower us to be messengers of, of your gospel, of your good news, God. And that includes reprieve from uh, mental health struggles and mental conditions, God, that you use these things that we are struggling with for good. So God, we, we thank you and we praise you for this person's life. God, lay your blessings over them and please just continue to be present in their life, God, and use them for amazing things. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks for joining In The Water Podcast. We hope this episode refreshed your spirit and gave you a new perspective. God bless, and we will see you in the next episode.